Good morning, everybody. Um, I want to first start off by wishing you guys a beautiful and blessed Sunday morning. Yes, I'm just getting up, been up maybe about 45 minutes and not feeling so good this morning. But I had to get up and get breakfast started. So this is one of those videos. Um, I want to first give a shout out to all my crab eaters that enjoyed the video yesterday. Y'all, I wish I could have had some. We I somehow, I'm going to have to find a way to be able to send some of y'all um, some crabs through the mail. Put them on ice or dry ice or something. Have them already done so y'all can have them. But um, until that time, y'all, I'll eat some for you. So, um... This morning, I'm up getting breakfast started, and I thought about the fact that one of my friends told me that she don't know how to cook grits. And, well, I think it was, she's, she don't like grits. And I thought I would just show you how I make my grits. So here we go. I already have my water running. Well, not running, but boiling. And this is the type of grits that I use. Now, even though the bag says cooks in five minutes, I don't do that. Mine have to cook for at least 20, maybe 30 minutes. Okay, because that's just the way I like mine. Now, I got my water on. So what I'm going to do, and I've already separated some. Not that I'm going to use all of this in this small pot, but that's just the way I do. So I'm going to pull these, pour it in. Little bit by little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to stir it. Make sure there are no lumps and that it's not sticking to the bottom. Turn your fire down because your pot will overboil like it was getting ready to. Okay. So while that's cooling off a little bit, I'm going to stir it. Now I'm going to add a little more. And I'm going to stir. I'm going to add a little more. Now this takes some practice. I will suggest you read the instructions and it will tell you how much water to use to how much of um, your grits you're going to use. I don't do that. I do it by feel. Okay. So, put this back on the eye. And I can pretty much feel that. Hope y'all can see it. It's kind of thick. Not real thick, but see, there's still movement. You know it's too thick when your water does not move around. Now, I am going to have to wind up adding some water. Because that's what I do. I keep adding water until it's the consistency that I want. Okay. Sprinkle a little salt. And that's the thing. My family always tell me I don't add enough salt. And the reason for that is I don't like a lot of salt. If I feel like I want to be able to taste my food, I just don't want to taste. I don't want to put too much salt. Salt is bad for you. Even though it gives you food flavor, you can use it in moderation. My daughter, she has a habit of putting too much salt. She'll just keep adding. She pulls it in the, in the palm of her hand and then just sprinkles it in. Okay. Now you see it's starting to bubble. I'm going to add a little more water to it. And I'm going to keep doing that until I feel like they're done. Okay. So that's my grits. I'm going to um, find my lid at this point. 
and I'm going to cover it and let it simmer. sausage on. These sausage I'm going to fry them because my husband and my nephew like theirs fried. So, yeah, my nephew is over spending the weekend with us. And, um, I'm going to give y'all another shot of the, the bag of grits. And it's Jim Dandy Enriched, Enriched Quick Grits. Cooks in five minutes. Okay. And it tells you the calories per a fourth of a cup. So it's 160 calories, no fat, no sodium, no sugars. And from my understanding, talking to friends and family members that live up north, they put sugar in their grits. And I don't do that. I'll add cheese or I'll add... Um, of course, butter or margarine. Um, I even like to fry my bacon and then break it up on top of my grits. And that'll be breakfast. I got to get my stomach. It's hurting me so bad, y'all. I just, I can deal with pain, you know, that time of the month. It's just that first day, I have a lot of pressure and bloating. What a subject to switch to, talking about breakfast. So I'll get off of that. But y'all can see in my face, I don't feel good. My face kind of puffy. But, see, I just got my hair wrapped up. I literally just got out of bed. But I'm going to have to do something to my hair today because I'm not... Well, maybe I just moisturize it and tie it up and then... Get my toothbrush and lay these edges down. Ain't no biggie. I'm hoping it's not too cool outside today because I want to go to the flea market um, to get me some fruits and vegetables. And my husband did say after he get up that and we eat breakfast that we will go. Uh, oh, excuse me. The fruits and vegetables at the, at the flea market and the farmer's market. I'm going to see if we'll do both because it's Sunday, y'all. His games be on, and he get been out of shape when he can't watch his games. Um, so I'm going to try to see if they'll get up early enough. I think my, well, oh, shoot. I got a head to do today, y'all. My daughter, um, my daughter's friend wants to come get her hair done before she go to work. She has to be to work at 3, so, hmm. I don't know how that's going to work. Because it's going to take me about two hours to do her hair. Because I got to braid it. Unless she get a, um, a fishnet um, weaving cap. If she get the fishnet weaving cap, all I have to do is put a braid around the edge. Not her very edges. I leave her edges out. But the next area, just put a braid all the way around and just put one big braid down the back and then sew the cap on to, the, to that braid that I put all the way around and go from there. Um, I don't know if she won't leave out or what. Um, so we'll see. Uh, <clears throat> this is the same friend she's in. I did a video and not too many people watched it, of course. It's fine, but it's just a compilation of pictures of hairstyles of me and my girls, and then there's one girl, extra girl on there. It's my daughter's friend who hair I do a lot, so she's the one, and um, I'm going to see how that goes today. Oh, excuse me, y'all. I'm not one for taking a lot of medicine, so I'm, I'm dealing with this without taking any medicine. 
I had a friend of mine ask me last night. She was like, we were talking about childbirth. She said, did you have all your children natural? And I said, yeah. I had all of them natural. My first three, I had my first child. Um, I didn't have any medicine at all. My second one, I didn't have, or the third one, I didn't have any medicine. I wouldn't even let them give me, like, Demerol and stuff like that through the IV. Mm -mm. Now, my fourth child, um, I did have some medicine with her, but after five minutes, they turned it off because her vital signs went haywire and so did mine. It, but they gave me that because... I was going to get my tubes tied, and I didn't. I couldn't get it tied because the medicine that they needed to give me sent my blood pressure up, and um, my heart rate, and then the baby wasn't reacting good to it. And not only that, it's supposed to numb you, like from under your breastbone all the way down. That wasn't so with me. It numbed me from here all the way down. So I couldn't feel myself breathe, y'all. It was so scary. I was like, hey, uh, what's going on? I feel funny. I grabbed my husband. I was like, ooh, baby, I feel lightheaded. I feel like I'm about to pass out. And I say, seriously, go get the doctor, the nurse, somebody. When they came in, they looked at my vital signs, and they were off the chart. And they was like, well, calm down. I say, what am I doing but laying here? How am I panicking? I just can't. I just feel funny. I said, I can't feel myself breathe, and I kept taking deep breaths because I felt like I was going to stop breathing. And so they say, um, they watched it for a few minutes, and they said, okay, well, we're going to have to turn it off. And, of course, they said, well, we're not going to be able to tie your tubes. And I said, okay. I left it at that. I wasn't going to argue with nobody because was, I was not trying to kill myself and down no table and get my tubes tied, and it would have been for nothing. So the second time... Um, when I had Mia in 2006, I told the doctor about it, well, the anesthesiologist, because I wanted my tubes tied. I told her about it, and she said, well, what happened last time? They gave you, they should have given you a tester dose. The tester dose is a very, very small amount to see. I see a moth, and I don't want to kill him on my light-colored wall, but I'm hoping he fly away, and then I can hit him somewhere else. But anyway, um, the tester dose is to see how you react to it. So she gave me a tester dose, and I did fine. And I promise y'all, 10 minutes, the doctor came back in and said, because my doctor was not there, that he wasn't going to be able to do my tubes and I was like why what was the purpose of giving me the medicine and putting a thing in my back if you're not going to do it he already knew my doctor wasn't there because he was a doctor on call I was I wasn't pissed but I was like here we go again and he gave me some reason about if anything happened he would be liable and I guess he went and read my chart as to my vital signs and everything from the last time so he said he couldn't do it. So they turned it off. And then, within like an hour or two after that, I don't even think it was two hours, maybe about, because I, from the time I got to the hospital to the time I had Mia, it was six hours. Six hours. From the time I got to the hospital, with Jalen in 2004 to the time I had her was four and a half hours. From the time I got to the hospital when I had Corey, Jalen, not Jalen, Corey, Janae, Ashley, and Darian, they all were born in four hours from the time I reached the hospital. Which I had only, I can't even tell you how long I had been in labor with Jalen because with Jalen, Mia and Corey because from the time I turned three months I had contractions so I didn't I didn't even know when I went into labor so of course that was that but that pain medicine I didn't have you know a lot of people say oh I was able to rest comfortably with Corey 
all it felt like was menstrual cramps the whole time. I laid there and I talked to my best friend on the phone. And then when they told me, um, okay, we'll be back in an hour and it'll be time for you to push, I got nervous. I was like, oh my goodness. I don't know. I felt like, at that point, I felt like a brand new mother. Like I had never done that before. Why, I don't know. But I did. And she was like, you actually get nervous? And I was like, yeah. And she, I said, I said, Kid, I'm so scared. I don't know why I'm so scared. I just got scared. And she was like, well, you've done that. I said, I know I've done it before. I said, for some reason, I just feel different. And um, at that point, they were like, they were going to come and break my water. I told them, oh, heck no. Uh -uh, you need to call the man with the medicine. Because in the time that I've had my water broken before with my first three, I know how that pain kicked in. Now with Jalen, my water broke at home in the bed. With Mia, they broke my water. So I know what that felt like. And the pain just got worse. But I didn't have any pain medicine. So when the doctor came to give me the epidural, before he got in the room, my husband was in the chair sleep, and I was sitting up in the bed. And God spoke to me with a, with, not with an extremely loud voice, but the way I'm talking now. He said, you're not going to need it. I looked around. I was like, oh, my goodness. Am I tripping? Because I know I got nervous, and I thought I was really tripping. I thought I was hearing things. And I was like, I cannot tell these people that I'm hearing stuff because they ain't going to lock me up or be ready to give me some medicine. That's going to um, trip me out, you know. Thought I saw a mosquito. Dang, blast it. But anyway, y'all, the mosquitoes irritate me. So, I did wind up. The doctor came in, and I let him put it in anyway. I be dang blasted. As soon as he put it in, I was like, hey, that hurt. I could feel the cord in my back. And you're not supposed to be able to feel that because they're supposed to give you numbing medicine so that you don't feel it. But I felt it. I laid down. She said, well, maybe. Hold on, y'all. I see a um, mosquito. I got to lay this down. Hold on. Sorry about that. But the mosquitoes, they make my baby swell up. If I try to keep them. Um, I think Thursday, um, I got the pest control coming out. Terminex is going to come and spray the yard. My neighbors got cats, y'all. They get... I stood here to, the, uh, um, to my doors the other day. And I'm going to show y'all what I can see. Can y'all see that out the door? And that's my little shed in the backyard. My husband going to turn it into a boom boom room. But I'm sitting here just like this. And the cat, I see him lay down in the grass. And he turn on his back and do like this. And I'm like, what in the happen? He just a scratching. I say, that sucker got fleas. Go out there. Kids playing. Mia and Jalen come back in. They got bumps everywhere. I'm thinking they mosquito bumps. I look. They mosquito bumps. They flea bumps. So I've been finding little fleas around the house because the darn cats, they lay around my um my yard. They lay around my yard. And they scratch themselves and all that old mess so I just I called Terminates I was like I need y'all to come and spray and my sister looked online at some stuff called liquid fence but you gotta order it offline and I don't say it before I don't like ordering stuff offline but I'm gonna have to do it all I'm gonna see today if I can find it at Home Depot what it's supposed to it's, it's different kinds and they're supposed to keep cats and 
dogs and stuff like that out of your yard. And that's what I want because my I want my babies to be able to go out there and play in the yard and not get bit up by fleas and carrying on. Um, so Terminex is going to come on the 15th and spray the inside and the out, front and back. And um, that way they'll have a chance to get outside and play and then do away with some of these mosquitoes. Mm. Oh, excuse me, y'all. But, yeah, childbirth, the medicine, it just started, that, that pain in my back, that tube just really got to me. So they actually took it out. And I just pushed this behind right on out. And, y'all, they told me that day he was the, I think it was the 24 baby boy to be born that day in a row and I was like wow and the lady was like we are so busy the head nurse she was just the sweetest pie but that helper got hands like a man honey she had I had just a little bit like a little about that much of my cervix was still like over this part of his head so she put her hand up there to push just that little bit of my cervix up over his head so he could just come baby felt like I was being worked on with no medicine felt like I was having a having surgery from the inside out oh my goodness and then she kept talking about push and I was like how am I supposed to push and you causing me more pain than the baby doing I did that y'all for about a, about an hour tell you the truth she wasn't doing it constantly she would stop in between contractions and I was like Gayla please please tell this lady to stop cause if she, I can't stand it I can't, t I, can't I felt like it was just excruciating pain. I just couldn't. I never had any pain like that before. And she said, well, I got to try to help you because, oh, another mosquito. She said, I got to try to help you because I don't want you to tear yourself. I said, no, I can do it. I can do it. And at that point, I was willing to listen. I didn't, not willing to. But whatever came through my head at that point, if God was speaking to me, I was going to listen to it because he had already told me I wasn't going to need the medicine. And sure enough, when I let them go ahead and put it in my back anyway, I didn't need it. It set my vital signs off, and then I could feel that thing in my back. I was done with that. So anything else that they was telling me that I needed, I was going to question you down. Like, you're you going to tell me why. You're going to give me a good legitimate reason as to why. So she kept saying that. I say, I had to literally raise my voice at her, scream at her. To tell her stop it now I didn't want to curse the lady out because that wouldn't help the situation on so she said okay I tell you what when you have your next contraction I'm gonna give you a chance to do it if it don't work then I'm gonna have to help you again baby I felt that contraction coming on I grabbed both of my legs and I bear it down like I had to go to the bathroom in the worst way and he came right on out. Good morning, Mia. Good morning. You see my baby? Hey. <laughs> Go brush your teeth, mama. That's my boo there. She's so little, y'all. Look at her. <laughs> She's six years old. That's my poop, but... But he came on out and said, I, I told her, I said, see, I told you I could do it. I could do anything through Christ who strengthens me. And he was there with me the whole time. He gave me peace through the whole thing. And y'all don't know, as many children as I've had, I've always prayed to have an easy labor. One where my pain wasn't so bad because I done had some pain. Oh. That would be the only thing, well, not the only thing. One of the things that would discourage me from having any more children is that pain. That's what, and then how sick I be. That nausea. I had nausea so bad. Ooh, it was awful. But, um, so yeah, I had natural childbirth. And. I never had a C-section. 
um, the only stitches that I had was the doctor messed around and cut my stuff one of my lips like that with the clamp I didn't know it. I felt it but it just felt like a little stick and then when he was sewing me up he was like I gotta give you a few stitches and I said okay I was just glad that baby was out. That was it. And that was with my son, Darian, back in, um, 92. But other than that, thank you, God. Because I've seen a lot of people have C-sections, and it's just like, I don't want to be in that pain like that. Now, I, you know, of course, your stomach cramp a little bit afterwards with childbirth, natural childbirth, but... They gave me some um, ibuprofen to take because I didn't want to take nothing else. And when I had Corey, the nurse was like, what's wrong in here? I was like, what you mean? You don't never ask for nothing. You don't ring the bell. You don't call us. You, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm ready to go home. She was like, well, you don't want nothing? I say, just make sure that the baby have enough diapers and milk. And just bring me a pitcher of ice and a pitcher of water. And then, you know, when it's time for me to eat, I'll eat. That was it. And she just was like, well, you the easiest person I ever had. You just don't ask for nothing. And then she came in. They all started coming in the day that we were being released. And they was like, oh, my goodness, it smell good in here. What is that? And they was like, well, where is the patient? It tripped me smooth out. Because I was sitting on the edge of the bed and I had on my sweatpants, I had on a shirt. I had got up, y'all, took me a shower. And I mean, I brought my own soap and everything. Took me a good shower and I did my hair. She said, well, where's the patient? Is she in the bathroom? I said, no, ma'am, I'm the patient. She said, you don't like you had no baby? I say, well, thank you. You know, then I'm thinking to myself, what should I look like? And y'all, I had to did my makeup. I did my hair. I was fully dressed. I had on my socks and my house shoes. And she said, well, what smells so good? I say, it's my hair products. She said, man, that smell good. And it's the, um, I think it was the, um, that olive oil moisturizing I think it was that it was one of them I can't that was so long ago I think that's what I was using but whatever it is it, it did it smell good I love stuff that smell fruity not flowery I like the fruity scents like orange and and stuff like peach and just a combination of stuff I love stuff like that so she, everybody come in and was like, well, where's the patient? Is she in the bathroom? I said, no, I'm the patient. <laughs> Boy, they tripped me out. I said, these people trying to be nice. They want to hurry up and get me out of this room. And I was, I just kept asking them, can I go now? Can I go now? Can I go now? And they just so strict about not letting you walk out the hospital. We're waiting on the wheelchair. I'm like, I don't need a wheelchair. My leg's not broke. But you just had a baby. I said, yeah, that was two days ago. If I can walk downstairs to the cafeteria to get me something to eat, I can walk out to the car to get in there. But she was like, no, we have to make sure that the baby's in a car seat. I say his daddy can carry him in the car seat. No, we we need him to be safe. We don't, not that dad is going to drop him, but that's just one of our hospital policies. I was like, okay. So that's what took me the longest, because I had signed my release papers at 9 o'clock. Here it is, 11 almost 12 o'clock before I walked out the hospital. So I was through. Everything was packed up. I was ready to go. But I was glad to get out of there. I was glad to be there and be safe and my baby be healthy. And when he was born, y'all, he was a little thing. And then they just kept talking about my baby was going to have Down syndrome and that he was going to be underdeveloped because his legs, his leg bones were not growing and 
And my husband, he was like, you quit listening to that there. And then it finally kicked in, say, y'all don't realize, look at my husband. He 5'3", and I'm 4'11". My baby is not going to be tall. And the lady was like, well, yeah, you're right. Stand up again, let me see. I feel like I'm going to grow a little more than what I just told you. So she was like, well, we're just going to, I was seeing specialist after specialist after specialist. I think I can't. I think I had like three sonograms, three different kind of sonograms in one day. So yeah. Hey Jalen, good morning. Jalen and Corey slept in the bed with me and my husband last night, and um, Corey, <laughs> he was so cute. He, Jalen walked in the room. Hey, Jalen. It's Jalen. And um, before he was born, I used to mess with Jalen. Hey, Nate. You might have to go in my bathroom. And um, I said, Jalen, Corey going to be like, Jalen. Be patting on the Jalen. Jalen. Hey, Jalen. 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 Jalen, let's go to the store, Jalen. Jalen, come on, let's go to the store. Let's go play, Jalen. Jalen, you hear me, Jalen? Jalen, Jalen. So it always make her laugh. And now he say her name just the way that I thought he would. Jalen. 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 So he just wrapped his arms around her neck last night and kissed her so hard. Then he'll take a drink. Then he'll lean back down there and he kiss her again. I said, well, Jalen, is he kissing you? She couldn't even say nothing because he had his whole mouth over her mouth just kissing her. He loved Jalen. Jalen, sometimes when he was little, a little smaller, and uh, she would get him and sit on the sofa with him, and she would put him to sleep. He sometimes didn't want nobody to hold him but Jalen. Go figure. Jalen is now eight. At that time, she was just barely turning seven, I believe. But he just wanted Jalen. Even like right now, when he wakes up, if she is in this room, he goes to her first and hug her so tight. And then he pull her down and he grab her face like this and he kiss her. <laughs> My babies. So y'all, ooh, I'm at 32 minutes. Y'all, I don't went from breakfast to all kind of stuff. But y'all know how I do. I like to run my mouth. But later on... Rest it out with some hot water, okay? I'm going to have to get y'all um, some um, toothbrush covers. But um, later I'm going to do a video. We're going to do a video later of me asking y'all some questions. Remember the video I told y'all wanted to do? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll... What you think already on the stove? See, I knew my baby was going to wake up. My husband said, make some sausage, grits, and eggs. All I got to do is scramble the eggs. And y'all, he like his eggs soft. I don't like, I like them soft, but not soft like that to where they still run it a little bit. He love them. He love them like that. And he be like, I don't want nobody making my eggs but my baby. So I got to, um, I got a little small cast iron skillet that I scrambled my eggs in. My grandmother used to do that. She had a certain pot that she used to scramble her eggs in. And it was so it was so well seasoned that um, even after washing it, whenever the heat from the eye on the stove hit it, that seasoning would come out of the pot and season those eggs. I don't, y'all, all she used to put was salt and black pepper in there. But it's like. She always used that pot for like sauteing her, for her dressing, sauteing her onion and her celery together. And it seemed like every time that pan would get heated up, you could smell the celery and onion in that pan. So she would use that same pan for her eggs. And that's, I don't know, it just seemed like that seasoning would be in those eggs. And you talking about something was good? It was good. So a few little tricks I learned from Grandma. I didn't learn all the things that I wish I had now because I wasn't into cooking when I was young. I was into 
um, making clothes and from when I, when I was like 10 on to 15, I used to draw. I was very good at drawing. So I took, in middle school, I took graphic design and commercial arts in, um, and photography. And that was what I was interested in. And then I soon got into doing hair. So I went to cosmetology school in high school. That's a moth meal. Fix your glasses, push them up. Go look in your um look in your closet, ask Nene to give you some socks to put on. Um I went to cosmetology school one semester and I couldn't go back. That's when I found that I had asthma. Cause they was teaching us how to do everything. How to mix your own you know, like now you can buy hair color already mixed. No. We had to mix it with the peroxide and the 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 all the stuff that you have to mix it with from old school days. That's what we mixed it in. Customized colors, we had to do that. So those fumes would get to me and it would set off my asthma. I was out for six weeks, y'all, because my asthma had gotten that bad. And I got a, a really, really bad cold that turned into pneumonia. And they were giving me all kinds of steroids and antibiotics and this and that and breathing into a bag and doing all you talking about something, something scary. My lungs would tighten up so bad. I'd be like this, like somebody done blew me up. So I wound up not finishing. So that's where my love for hair has come from. And I just never did go back because I was always afraid that the chemicals would make me sick. And even wearing the little mask, it didn't do any good. So that's why I do hair at home. You know, just general little stuff. I don't mix colors and all of that. Um, so I don't do a lot of things. But I can relax my hair. I can color, which I buy the kind. They have some now that I get out of salads in a little black bottle with a blue writing. Which I want to get some of that. And y'all see my gray? I want to dye my hair jet, jet, jet black. Now my daughter, Galen... I dyed hers. Her hair has always been kind of sandy red and brown. It switches between that. She wanted it black. So I dyed her hair black. But it's been about four or five months since I dyed it. But it's still black. So um, I think she says she want to do a retouch. It might. I might make because she just relaxed it. So I'm going to make her wait before I get some more dye and put in it. What you doing, Jamie? So, guys, I've talked enough. I'm going to um, come back with another video later, later on, and I'm hoping this will upload. Send me a message, y'all, and let me know if it's uploaded. Because, like I said, I'm doing this from my phone, and I can't just go on and edit anything. So, we'll see. Y'all, I'll talk to you guys later. Um, I hope your morning is going well. Um, read a few scriptures today. God is good. Hey, me. Hey. Fix your glasses, boo. They's leaning to the side. There you go. What's in your hand? And your glasses leaning. Huh? Did you blow your nose? Go blow your nose. I can hear it. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.